Welcome to Case Back Watches, my name is Tim and in this episode I'd like to speak about Babylon Berlin, the garments there and how to wear them without looking like a, some sort of reenactor. And this was an idea by a viewer and he wrote me, it would be interesting to see your opinion on wardrobe and watch styles shown in shows such as Babylon Berlin and Mad Men and how one could go about executing them in today's environment without looking like a total buffoon. Good question. Really good question. Joy, here's your video. Okay, first question. What do we find attractive in those shows, Babylon Berlin or Mad Men? What do we find attractive? Is it really the look of the 30s or is it something else? And let's put it simple. In my eyes, we have there four points to consider. The first, the people there, they, they dress with more effort. I mean, it was dictated by formality in most cases, but today we've seen it as more effort in the wardrobe. The people there add something to the street, add something to the, to the, to the public life. And then we think, wow, this is cool, this is beautiful, because nowadays, oh, 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 some people expose them in a way, ah, terrible. Point two, shape, 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 shape. If you compare, let's say, an overcoat from today, with an overcoat from 1930, then you see the older garment comes with way more shape, with defined details. And the fashion industry get, got rid of those details, of those, those, those shape, because it's very, very expensive to manufacture such a garment. And so they try to convince us, or they are convincing us with commercials and advertisings that a garment without shape is the, the hot shit, it's the real deal. And the story behind it, it's for cutting costs. Three, substantial garments, especially Babylon Berlin. If you see those overcoats, those suits made out of thick, massive fabrics, every piece seems very robust, like it could last forever. Everything looks sort of handmade and brings tons of personality in it. And I think that's what we really like, what we really appreciate, this robustness in the, in the garments back then. Four, people look very comfortable in their suits there and in their overcoats there. They look very comfortable, they wear those pieces with ease and they look ready for everything in it. Nowadays we often connotate a suit with a very formal and stiff attire, but not this. I mean Babylon Berlin sometimes is an action movie with well-dressed characters. They really look ready for every type of action in those nice robust suits and I think this is a mixture we, we, we love, if we love the show of course. So those are the four points we have to bring to life now. Effort in the garments and shape, substantial closings and people who feel comfortable in those substantial clothes. And what's not important in my opinion, what's not important is to copy exactly um, the fashion details of the 30s. This is the direct road to reenacting. Then you look like a figure with a, with a costume. And so not overly important. And so. I don't want you to go to the tailor and order a three-piece, 30-inspired suit for three or four or five thousand euros or US dollars. It would be a waste of money, will not look good in this, in this attire, at least I think so. And so what I want to recommend you here are two key pieces and an accessory. And then you are good to go. Let's speak about two key pieces and an accessory and then you have the vibe. Then you have our four points in your wardrobe. I think this is very, very easy to decide because everybody needs a jacket, right? And the jacket is very prominent on you and so this would be a good way to go. Your key essential jacket, 30 inspired jacket like Babylon Berlin. And again, don't focus on the tiny details, focus on the fabric because this is the main distinction between a jacket nowadays and a jacket back then, substantial fabric and it should be a fabric with some sort of texture you can feel you can see herringbone is a good example um, you, you see an example of a massive herringbone or Donegal tweed with those dots would be a good example but there's one little problem every garment you see or nearly every garment you see in shows like Babylon Berlin is not wearable nowadays because it's too warm I mean, it's an idiotic way to live, to be frank, but if you live in an industrialized country like I, then you will find every room heated up to, to insane temperature. Even big shopping malls here, you can walk there in a t-shirt in February. And so an authentic suit from the 30s would be 
mortal here, absolutely mortal. You cannot wear this, all right? And so what you need is a blend. You can check your garment, the little tag with the, with the ingredients of your fabric, and you want wool for the shape, for the good shape, for the drape of the, of the garment, but you need also something cooler, way cooler. And so, for example, this thing here looks bulletproof and it looks very hot, but it's a mixture of 50% wool and 50% cotton. You can go for wool and cotton, wool and silk, wool and linen, or other natural fibers. This is important. Polyester doesn't age very good. It can turn into some sort of lilac shade and it will ruin your garment. And your key jacket should last 10 years. And so avoid polyester massive fabric with natural fibers, okay? Next part here is the, 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 the cut, the shape, the details. I mean, look, look at this jacket here. This was inspired by a vintage 20s traveling suit. So it has uh, those button, every, every pocket is with a button so that you don't lose your passport. Actually, it was inspired by Boardwalk Empire by the scene with Naki in Penn Station, I think. Penn Station, he's in a, in a, in a cafe, he eats a cinnamon roll, although he doesn't like cinnamon rolls and he, he wears this, some sort of this. So I, I robbed the, the overall idea here, the, the, the high waistcoat and everything. But you don't need all those details. You can focus on two points. First, natural shoulders. If you want your key jacket not so overly formal, then you need natural shoulders without a padding in it. This, for example, is just my shoulder. There's nothing in it. There's only the fabric. There's a little bit wool here in the sleeve. But this is only my shoulder and this is the reason why it looks pretty pretty natural and by the way if you find the perfect jacket but with too much in the shoulder then a tailor can remove this and then i want you to focus on the lapel very easy very narrow lapel is 60s and 20s check mad men they have very narrow lapels and very very wide lapels then we are in the 40s or early 50s and the 30s were a very good time for the lapel because there you see those lapels, those medium shaped lapels about, what is it, 90 to 100 millimeters. And so very good looking lapels, very natural. And so this, in my opinion, is everything you need is a natural shoulder, well proportioned lapels. And little tip, if you want to have some very special, but then you need a tailor, is a belt on the back of your, of your garment. You see this all the time in old movies, but... Um, you will not find it straight from the rack, of course. Which brings us to the next point, where to buy such a garment. Um, the chances that you can buy such a garment straight from the rack in, in your local shop is very limited, I'm afraid. And so maybe you have luck or you need a tailor. This is the big solution. But that, then you have, really, you have to invest really big money. Or the better solution in my eyes is made to measure companies. You can find them on every continent, in every country nowadays. A popular example is Suit Supply and they offer made to measure service where they have a basic garment. You get in this, you put it on and then they, they alter everything which need to be altered, right? And they charge, uh, what is it? You can, you can buy their made to measure jacket for about 500 euros or 500 US dollars, which is a very reasonable price. Or in Germany, you have Kove, which is a more advanced, a little bit more pricey. They charge up to 1,000 or let's say 800 for, for a jacket. And now you may say 800 for one jacket. Guys, this is way too expensive. It's not. If you have chosen a very substantial fabric, then the thing will last 10 years. And I mean, do the math. This is only 60 to 80 bucks a year. And I think everybody can afford this. And it's way cheaper than fashion garments you throw away after one season. And if you want to buy fabric yourself, then little information for you, you want 12 ounces at least. 12 ounces is about 350 grams for an entire meter. I don't know how they measure this in the United States, to be frank, but I think with grams and ounces, 12 ounces, you are good to go. You can, you can make your calculation, but this is the weight you need. The next key piece you should buy are shoes. Very easy. Shoes. Just stick to old manufacturers. Trickers, Logue, Chini, you, you name it. All those old British or American or German companies. Heinrich Dinkelacker, Kommissarat on Babylon Berlin. Where's Heinrich Dinkelacker? So very easy. And stay conservative. Back then people saw their, their boots and shoes as an investment. They wanted robust quality and I think that's exactly the way to go at least for your first pair of decent shoes and I can you show you some examples here um, today I wore those logs together with this suit I mean this is the log height 
this is this goes for about uh, between 250 and 300 euros and so 260 to to 310 us dollars i think in that in that region so a little bit formal or um when i go to the park then i wear the log what is it bosworth i think bosworth so way more substantial i only wear rubber soles by the way i know i know there are purists and they say the real deal is the leather sole yeah but then you're at the train station and it's wet and then good luck with your with your leather soles and so very easy look is my recommendation or i have some nice genies here formal dress boots black with an iron on on, on the tip and with with a rubber sole and yep and so very easy goat for quality spend your 300 on shoes at least i think this is a really good recommendation because they last for instance you can send the low boots back to the manufacturer they will repair them for 100 bucks they will overhaul everything for 100 or 120 bucks and so it's a very good deal you can wear them for a decade if you want and now you're nearly good to go now you have two very substantial pieces in your in your wardrobe and if you want to combine your jacket and those shoes with jeans why not why not Je jeans are a great garment i mean they are very popular for a reason and so if you are the jeans type of guy then wear jeans or you like khakis then wear khakis no problem you have your two key pieces and now now you are you are ready now you can add an accessory and i mean this is very personal we all have our tastes and and our desires and in my case it's very simple i wear hats in the winter and, and not some sort of beanies and i wear a wristwatch and it's really like a garment then in the morning then i check the the the, the weather report and then i i calculate my day i think about where what kind of what kind of meetings i have and if rather environment or not or if i need a dress watch or two watch and which suit i'm wearing and so yeah this is um, the way to go for me a hat and a nice watch and the last weakness is i think um yeah I, I like ties i like ties and ascots this is rather exotic but yeah why not why not i mean people look at you sometimes but you know what i don't give a life is short and so if i like ties i like ties and the last weakness is um are good leather products i think this is a this is a man thing right that we like good leather products i'm working on the diesel punk executive back mark ii can show you the progress this is the base plate this is the base plate if you need the the the, the yeah i don't know how to call it with the handle copper rod hangers and here you have the front pocket and so and and i mean, look at this this is massive 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 leather this thing will last longer than than i which is kind of depressing <laughs> to think about that but i really like it this will be a substantial bag and so you see personal personal accessories you have your foundation now it's time to play a little bit and so if you like a nice necklace or a ring then put it on you're good to go you have reached your target to dress um in the way of those shows with a with a vibe but without being a reenactor or a what was it complete buffoon right and so yeah i think we're at the end of this video it was a pleasure to help you out with those tips if you have further questions then please put it in the comments i will read every line and then maybe we can make a sequel to this video and yeah we, we will see and if you want to see the progress of the diesel punk executive back mark ii then <laughs> join me on instagram please it's caseback underscore tim and now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.